this is not for just presidents of the country. It's not just for CEOs. It's not just for those who lead big organizations. What I'm about to talk about that you might put into those categories is a concept that is for all of life, for any age, at any moment. All of life, any age, at any moment, whether you're a toddler or you're leading a nation. And the word is vision. Now you've heard it a million times. But it is so crucial, so crucial to have a vision for all the different components of your life. Now, let's start with, what is a vision? Well, a vision does not have to be grandiose, although it can be, you know, JFK, way back when, he put a grandiose vision out there for a decade almost later, said by this year, notice there's a time, by this year, we will put Somebody on the moon. Okay, grandiose. I don't know who was, you know, riding around the block on their skateboard that day, but it's a long way from a skateboard to, you know, the moon. Big, 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 big vision. Can be grandiose. It can be a toddler thinking for the first time, my toy's on the other side of the room. I have a vision. I can be over there. On the other side of the room, I see it. I can see it. I've never done it before, but I see it. I see it. Well, why is that important? Well, here's what we know about the human race. The human race is pretty much the only species that God granted this ability in his image to, are you ready for this? To see a reality that does not yet exist. That is the image bearing nature of God as you, as creator. Now, you're not creator with the capital C, unless you have noticed you did not create the world around you. But God saw that before it existed. He called it into being. He put you on it and he went, Zap, I'm going to put a little bit of that small c creator in you so that you can create worlds for yourself. Well, what's a world? Well, how about a world in which your relationships look a certain way? How about a world in which your family looks a certain way? How about a world in which your career looks a certain way? How about a world in which you see a community of people that are supportive to you? How about a calendar? It looks like you look at it and everything on there has purpose and meaning and is designed to spend your time and energy in something that's going to create the worlds that you want. How about a vision of a you that you look in the mirror and you say, like. now that doesn't help really, does it? Finley, we don't need your vision right now. I just want you to chill. I don't know why I'm feeling sparky. But you look in the mirror and you see you see a person that you've resolved maybe maybe you've gotten in shape or maybe you're standing taller than you used to. Or maybe you're looking at that person and saying, I like you. How about a vision like that? Where a vision for your health, a vision for your relationships, a vision for your career. Well. That's what a vision is. It's defining a future that does not yet exist. And it is the vision where we see it. You know, in fact, the New Agers kind of did a lot better job of talking people into this reality than, than a lot of people that weren't New Agers or people of more, you know, Orthodox faith. New Agers go a little far in it. They make the C a capital C. Like you create the reality, you start to visualize it. You know, the Rolls Royce shows up in your driveway. Well, good luck with that. But you can visualize a Rolls Royce in your driveway and see that vision and then organize activities that will get you to being able to afford one. There are some people do that. That's different than the universe just doing whatever we want. But here's what I mean. 
you heard this way back when the, you know, if you can con- believe it and conceive it, you can achieve it. Why? Yes. If the toddler doesn't believe he or she can walk across the room, it ain't going to happen. And that's one of the reasons it's so important. The number one factor that loads on the accomplishment of any goal is the belief that it can be done. And that's where a vision starts. The belief that it can be done because a vision is the first step in putting the knife in the heart, the stake in the heart against hopelessness. When we believe maybe there's a different life I can have. And you start to see that. You start to really see it. And you start to to visualize that, wow, this is possible. One of my favorite passages god said i'm gonna tell you something it's possible there's a promised land over there and you know you've been in slavery but i there's a promised land over there and you can't see it but i'm gonna give you a little peek he sent 12 spies to go look at the land and you know what 10 of them had no vision all they saw was the obstacles oh it's too hard oh there's too many things in the way but two of them joshua and caleb they came back and they caught the vision and guess who led them there See, the vision is important. What we know from neurological research is that when you begin to see a goal, that it marshals the resources and your memory banks and the billions of networks of, of resources in your brain start to go and open up file drawers. We're going to need this. We're going to need this. And here's an idea. And it starts to get your juices going motivationally, but also cognitively and the initial beginning to hit the buttons on executive functions that will get you down the right track of what applies, what doesn't apply. And a vision is very important. Obviously, there's a lot of other steps that come after that, but you can't have steps if you don't have a direction. When Allison, and remember in Allison, one morning she comes to the fork in the road and she goes, which way do I go? And the Cheshire cat's sitting there and he goes, well, where are you trying to get to? At this fork in the road. She goes, I don't know, do I turn right? Do I turn left? He goes, well, where? Where are you trying to get to? She said, I don't know. He said, well, I guess it doesn't really matter then, does it? And you know, a lot of people live their lives that way. Didn't really matter what I do today. I mean, I'm going to do something. I'm going to either go down that road or I'm going to do this. No idea where we're trying to end up. And I want you to take this down to even the smallest increments of time. One of the things that our family would do, I would, I would, you know, when the kids were little and maybe we're going on a vacation or it could be a holiday season or the summer, summer vacation, sit down, we have family meeting say, okay, guys, what's your vision for this holiday? What's your vision for the summer? What's your vision? We're going on vacation. What's your vision? What, at the end of it all, where do you want to end up? Where do you want to end up and look back and say, here's what we did. Here's what we accomplished. Otherwise, we can go spend, you know, a week somewhere and at the end of it go, oh, yeah, that was fun, you know. But do we do what we really wanted to do in our hearts? It starts with a vision. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to think of that, what I call the, the pie of life, okay? I kind of divide life into a pie. A lot of people have a bunch of different ways of doing this. None of them right or wrong. I just find this to be the most effective and the most efficient. And I put a pie of life and I divide it into three big slices. Number one is the clinical life. What does that mean? Well, I wish I had a better word for it, but it's kind of how you feel. You know, you're thriving, your health. Are you depressed or are you... Are your moods good? Are you fearful and anxious or do you feel okay and have peace and, you know, and motivation instead of loss of energy, addictions versus self-control, you know, depression, anxiety, stress, energy levels, all that stuff. What's your vision for that piece of your pie? I want to say, I want to wake up and like want to face the day. That's my vision. I want to wake up and somebody invite me to something and I'm not anxious about going or fearful about going. I want to get on an airplane this year. That's my vision. Get over this anxiety. That's one slice of the pie. Second slice of the pie is your relationships. What do you want your marriage to look like? 
What do you want your dating life to look like? What do you want your community to look like? What kind of people do you want to have surrounding you? Go read Psalm 101 and you will see a great vision statement by David. He's talking about the kind of people that he wants around him. And he says, I'm not going to have, you know, people that lie and judge me, you know, and the, they're, they're arrogant and they're not faithful and, you know, they're narcissistic. These are all kind of interpretations of the words he used. He says, there's just certain kind of people I don't want in the picture anywhere. I'm not going to tolerate lying. It's not going to be in the picture. It's not part of my vision. And then here's what he said. He said, those whose ways are according to what God wants. That's my vision of my community. And he said, they are the ones that are going to minister to me. They're the ones that are going to dwell with me. Now think about that. So your community is going to be who fuels you. And I'm not talking about the whole world. I'm talking, you know, we can't get rid of all the dysfunctional people around us. I love my dysfunctional friends. Life would be so boring without some of the wackos that I love deeply and spend time with. But in the closest circles of who's going to minister to me, who am I going to call in the dark night of the soul? Who's going to help me reach my goals? Who's going to help me when I got a problem? I want a vision for what those chairs are going to look like, what the people seated in those chairs are going to look like. And that's who we begin to build that community. But it starts with a vision. You know, when um, when when Tori and I first got married, we we had a vision. You know, what do we want this to look like? What do we want life to look like and how we spend our time and who we're with, and what we're giving ourselves to and pouring our life into? How do we want to be with each other? And you get that vision and it starts to guide you. And the third piece of the pie is your performance life where you take your talents and your abilities and you put them to some sort of execution towards a meaningful goal and it's like when a kid graduates from high school and says i want to be a doctor or i want to be an accountant or i want to go into marketing and they have a vision for that and they see it well what does that vision do it starts to organize what courses I'm going to take and the ones I'm not going to take, where I'm going to show up to and where I'm not going to show up, what service clubs I'm going to join and the ones I'm not. See, the vision narrows it down to saying yes and saying no and also shows us how far I am from where I got to be and therefore begins to organize the activities to get us there. So take that pie of life. Now, some of you are saying, oh, wait a minute. What about the spiritual side of life, the spiritual slice of the pie, the faith development? Because a lot of people have a lot of different slices of the pie, intellectual development, professional. You know, I put it in three. They go, where's the spiritual? There's not a spiritual slice. The whole pie is spiritual, the whole pie, because think about this, how we're doing spiritually affects our clinical lives, how we feel, how we're doing spiritually affects our relationships and how we behave in them and organize them, how we're doing spiritually affects the development of our talents and the stewardship of our talents. And all of that has faith and spiritual development in it and meaning and purpose and learning God's ways, the way he designed things to work. So don't relegate your spiritual life to an hour on Sunday. Are you kidding me? An hour on Sunday? No. This is a, one of my favorite passages. It's Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. I can go out in my backyard and we can look at some plants. And you don't find a branch that says, yeah, I'm going to go hang out with the vine an hour on Sunday, get all the fuel I need, get all the sunlight and the minerals and everything and the shaping and the forming and the blossoming. Are you kidding me? It's not a slice. It's an abiding, it's the whole pie. See, God was an invisible spirit 
who spoke into reality through created abilities, create creative abilities, spoke into reality things that did not yet exist. You have been given that ability through faith. Every skyscraper in Manhattan did not exist. It was invisible, except it wasn't because it was very visible to the architect who saw it before it existed. You see, we got to abide with the source of where all this comes from. So once you think about your vision in those three areas, redo it all the time, tweak it, fix it, enlarge it. Hopefully it gets bigger. In some ways, some visions don't change. They just kind of morph and get bigger. But be able to see the life that you want, and then we can get busy to create it. But you can't create something if you don't know where you want it to be.